Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to give a small introduction to this reading vlog, which is namely going to be very specifically themed. You already saw some clips of the beautiful city of Breda and some historic sites. Breda is namely so-called Nassau-stad, which means the family uh, van Nassau, the family of Orange, which is the royal family of the Netherlands. They are the monarchs. <laughs> they spend a lot of time uh, throughout history in the city of Breda. So we have a lot of beautiful historic places. You saw the castle of Bouvigne, you saw the castle gardens of Bouvigne, you saw the forest surrounding that castle uh, and I think you also saw a little clip of the castle of Breda. One of the very uh, historic events that happened there was in 1667 the treaty of Breda was signed there which was actually a peace treaty between the Netherlands, the UK and Denmark, Norway and they kind of made an alignment against the powerful France, the powerful Louis XIV and there we are. It is no coincidence I wanted to visit those sites uh, seeing what I'm currently reading. Namely, in June I want to read books on Versailles and the creation of Versailles, uh, life at the Palace of Versailles. And the reason for that is that on the 4th of July I'm turning 30 and my boyfriend and I on a whim decided to make a little trip and we went to this beautiful cottage there and we're gonna go to Paris and we're gonna go to Versailles which I'm very very excited for and I'm very much someone who wants to be very prepared. I want to be there and I want to recognize stuff and I want to be informed on the history and also reading this now is kind of preliminary excitement for Pret. So I have three books on my shelves related to this that I want to read in this month. Two of them I've already read and I want to reread and one is a first read. So the first one being uh, Louis XIV, The Sun King, The Zonnekoning by Jan Opdebeek. Jan Opdebeek is a Belgian writer. He's a historian specialized in France. He also wrote some books on Napoleon, on the French Revolution. Uh, and this is on Louis XIV. And I've already read this a few years ago and I love this. I think this is such a good, detailed, interesting, addictive biography on Louis XIV. This is that kind of biography that, that leaves you completely obsessed with the main character afterwards. This is obviously also very specifically on his passion for the Palace of Versailles. So I'm already reading this. I am about 200 pages in. This is my main read for now. Loving this. Then another wee read would be The Sun King by Nancy Mitford, um, which is <laughs> a lot shorter. Again, I've already read this a few years ago and I remember not really enjoying this. I did read this before reading the other one. This was my first real contact with Louis XIV and I think this is not the best way to start. I remember it being very much focused on Versailles and on uh, the wives of Louis XIV, which are obviously two very main points in his life. But I think it just wasn't the best way to start. Now, knowing everything I know, but also being specifically interested in the Palace of Versailles, um, I am very curious what I'll think of this. Nancy Mitford was very much obsessed with the palace. She actually spent the last years of her life there, I think. So I'm very curious to see what I'll think of this now. And then finally, a new read for me, which is Marie Antoinette by Steven Zweig. I actually bought this a few years ago when I was in London. I think I bought it at Hatchard near Piccadilly Circus. And I've never read this. I, again, Marie Antoinette is one of those icons or one of those people in history that I think a lot of people become obsessed with. I think she's very well known in pop culture as well. Uh, I mean obviously Sofia Coppola made that movie about her which I really should revisit. <laughs> but I actually don't know that much about her or at least I don't think I've ever read a book about her. I think I read some articles about her but that's it. So I'm very very curious to read this. For the people who don't know Marie Antoinette was the wife of Louis XVI. So the grandson of Louis XIV and they were actually the last monarchs of France. So they died under the guillotine during the French Revolution. So these three uh, are gonna be the main focus. <laughs> Nancy Mitford's book is completely <laughs> diving away in the two big ones. But these are the three main reads of the month. Although <laughs> the other book that I'm already reading is This is Europa by Henrik Vos. This is Europe which is actually a historic book of the origination of the European Union. So another big ass <laughs> historic book. I'm not sure what I'm doing. I should probably just look for a very fun, easy fiction book in between. This is gonna be the read for the month. I'm very excited and I'll take you along.
So I just wanted to give a small update on my June Versailles reading month. I just spent some time on the balcony and I finished uh, Louis XIV by Johan of the Beek and it was great as ever. Obviously this is my second time reading it, absolutely loved it. I will give a detailed review in my wrap up. Overall it's just a very detailed biography on Louis XIV's life, like it has everything. How he was born, how he died, all the wives and mistresses he had in his life, but also obviously very nice in this context uh, how he created and improved the palace of Versailles, how life at Versailles was. From starting from like etiquette to uh, medicine to hygienics to uh, the apartments to the structure like everything was described which I think this was, would just be enough for me <laughs> for my preparation for visiting Versailles but obviously instead of that I got out two other books that I also want to read and add to my little TBR so it's getting a little bit out of control but next up is still Nancy Mitford's The Sun King but while I was reading Louis XIV and doing my googling and looking up things I also found out that Nancy Mitford wrote a book on Madame de Pompadour which is actually the wife, or no, she was the main mistress of Louis XV. So this works out perfectly, because I'm now reading on the time of Louis XIV at Versailles. And then I continue on with Madame de Pompadour, which is obviously a viewpoint of life at Versailles during Louis XV. And then uh, I can still continue on as normal <laughs> with Marie Antoinette by Stephen Zweig, which was obviously the wife of Louis XVI. So then I have the three great monarchs during life at Versailles covered. And then finally, another book uh, that I am interested in after reading Louis XIV is The Man in the Iron Mask by Alexandre Dumas. And this is obviously a fiction book. The reason why I want to read is one, uh, because I'm looking for an audiobook. None of these books are available on audiobook for me. And then uh, Johan Op de Beek actually mentions uh, The Man in the Iron Mask in the sense that this was actually a historical figure. Uh, I think during the 1680s and 1690s a person was seen with an iron mask being escorted out and in of the Bastille. Uh, he was wearing very beautiful and nice clothes, obviously showing that he came of wealth and a lot of speculation arise on who this person was. Voltaire later said that he thought it was Louis XIV's twin brother. Uh, and Alexander Dumas thought, this is a great concept, I'm gonna write a book on this and add this to my Musketeer th series. So the story goes that Louis XIV had a twin brother that they ended up covering up because obviously th this had a danger to his claim on the throne. And it is the final story in Alexander Dumas' uh, Musketeer series. So I'm gonna listen to this one because it takes place uh, during the reign of Louis XIV. Just kind of just as an addition uh, on my vibe. So that is my update for now. Obviously I'm doing great, I'm still loving it and I will talk to you soon. Welcome back. I just wanted to give a small update. I've been so busy with work the last couple of weeks. Uh, we are working towards a huge deadline for a release of one of our applications and it's just taking the life out of me. But the release is planned upcoming Monday night so I'm hoping that can take the edge off a little bit. I have one week left next week. It's Friday now. Next week I have one week left before I go on my holiday. We I first have a festival on the weekend and then we are going to Versailles. So I have one week left to finish up my reading and my books. But actually I also just got the advice to not come into the office anymore next week due to some new COVID cases at our place. So that will definitely save me a lot of travel time. I travel about two hours every day if I go into the office. Uh, and also I just hope that maybe brings the calm back a little bit, but we'll see. Anyways, reading update. First of all, I finished The Man in the Iron Mask by Alexander Dumas. I will get into all these books obviously in my wrap up. I enjoyed this. I thought it was very funny to read a story like this inspired on historic events. Roughly inspired on historic events. But generally I just thought it was too long and too detailed. And at one point I was just like, yeah, okay, I get the drift. 
Uh, I also saw the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, which obviously I already saw when I was much, much younger. It was a nice addition to the book. Then I finished Nancy Mitford's The Sun King. Again, really enjoyed this, also the second time around. Much more now I had this basic information on Louis XIV. It all just felt a little bit more coherent. It's just a very good impression on Louis XIV's character based on this collection of anecdotes. And it also just gives a very interesting view on the life at Versailles. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed this. And now I'm actually mainly reading uh, Nancy Mitford's Madame de Pompadour. And I'm enjoying this so much. I'm enjoying this way more than I enjoyed The Sun King. And funnily enough, uh, as mentioned, I think I only like this now because I had all this information on Louis XIV and I knew all the context. But I think I'm enjoying Madame de Pompadour as much because I don't know all the information. And I love like little trivia facts and stories come completely new for me and are very surprising. Which is funny because obviously it's the same writer and the same setup but I did order also the physical book but apparently that takes ages to come so I'm just continuing with the ebook and I'm hoping I can make a big chunk of that bit now. I am completely home alone this weekend so I do have some plans with friends tomorrow and I might even sleep over somewhere else and then I might also already want to pick up Marie Antoinette by Stephen Zweig just so I have a little bit of variation and I'm just very very excited to pick this up. So yeah uh, that's for the reading and then uh, next week what we still want to see is Marie Antoinette. Uh, I actually own the DVD. <laughs> that's apparently how much I loved it when I was younger. But I really want to see this with my boyfriend so I need to wait until he's uh, back. So yeah, that's the update. Uh, maybe I'll take you along a little bit more this weekend because I'm at home alone anyways. But I'm definitely hoping I can read a lot. It's a lot of fun reading all these books uh, kind of together. It just gives you such a good impression on how life at Versailles might have been. Also, little rectification, and this is what I learned from the Sun King. I shouldn't say the Palace of Versailles, but I should say Chateau de Versailles, because it was specifically meant not to be this enormous, luxurious palace, even though it is. Here I have it. Having fallen in love with Versailles, the king never made the mistake of improving away the very atmosphere which had attracted him in the first place. Because obviously, obviously Louis XIV improved the existing yacht house that was already built by Louis XIII. He built the greatest palace on earth, but it always remained the home of a young man. Grand without being pompous, full of light and air and cheerfulness, a country house. Indeed, it is called Le Chateau Never Le Palais. Chateau in French means gentleman's seat. A castle is a chateau for. Well. Hey, it's Saturday and I just wanted to give a quick update because I actually got in the book for Madame de Pompadour, which I'm so, so happy with. Uh, I actually ordered this online. As mentioned before, I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious with which book I acquire. And uh, for the books that I acquire, I want to make an effort to buy them in bookstores. But obviously sometimes books are not available in bookstores or you want a specific edition. But I wanted to get this specific one, obviously, because it matches my Sun King edition. So I'm really, really happy with it. It is a bit smaller though, but I mean, obviously you won't see that when it's on the shelves. But I'm very happy with it. I read a lot of this again this morning and last night. As you can see, I'm definitely going to be able to finish this today. And I'm absolutely loving this. Like this might be a four star read for me, which is so surprising because I enjoyed The Sun King, but it was definitely nowhere near like such an enjoyable read as this is. I've actually also picked up another book, which is ironic. So I actually ended up picking up the new Lucy Foley, which is called... The Paris Apartments. So I think my unconsciousness still chose to pick something up that takes place in Paris and still kind of has a little connection to it. So I think that's kind of funny. Uh, I might also watch a movie tonight. I watched Fresh yesterday, which is kind of a thriller or horror on Disney Plus, which I really enjoyed. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. of June, Thursday, so I thought it was a great moment to close off this reading vlog. My working week is also almost done. I had another very chaotic working week. I'm hoping I can kind of leave it behind for me now. I'm already packing, I'm collecting outfits for my festival weekend, and then Sunday I come home and we almost immediately leave for France. We're going to Paris, we're going to Versailles. So let's round up what I ended up reading additionally, and that's first of all, I finished up Madame de Pompadour by Nancy Mitford and I absolutely loved it. This might be my favorite book of what I've read for this reading vlog. I thought this was surprisingly enjoyable. I really really enjoyed this. I think Madame de Pompadour in general is a very interesting character and I really liked 
reading about her integration into court life at Versailles, but also her relationship with Louis XV. But it also just contains a lot of like interesting trivia facts on Versailles or in general. So for example, uh, the court was always referred to Sepaisi, which I probably butchered, which is translated to this country because it has its own customs, its own language, its own moral code, its own climate, which I think is very funny. And also what <laughs> I thought was absolutely amazing is this chapter called The Ball of the Clipped Dew Trees. <laughs> Like, while you, sometimes while you're reading this thing, you almost feel like this cannot be true. This cannot have actually happened. And then you look online and you find paintings referring to it. And you're like, okay, it did happen. So this is when they had a huge ball. I think it was for the Dauphin, but I'm not sure anymore. But anyways, the entire evening they were awaiting the King Louis XV to come out and join them in their presence. And very late in the evening, the antechamber to his apartment actually opened and... Coming out were eight dew trees clipped like those in the garden outside in the shape of pillars with vases on them. The king had made up his mind that for once he would be unrecognizable. So in fact, there were eight people coming out dressed up in costumes as dew trees, like cut out dew trees that they had in the garden, uh, and no one knew who the king was. So they all <laughs> joined the party and some people thought that they were actually talking to the king and they weren't. And this was actually the night that he uh, ended up spending a lot of time with uh, Madame de Pompadour, then not the Madame de Pompadour yet. And they actually also said about it, the handkerchief is thrown and this was the start of the love affair. Like these kind of things I think is so interesting. Overall, I just really enjoyed it and I thought this was absolutely amazing. One of my new favorite books. And then now I'm currently reading Marie Antoinette by Stephen Zweig. I am pretty far in already. There's bookmark is over here but I'm a little bit further already uh, so I'm hoping I might still finish this today because it's very interesting I think uh, I'm really enjoying this I think this is beautifully written like Stephen Zweig can really write a good story it's very addicting it's beautifully set up like chronologically but also with just some stories in between like every chapter has this uh, every chapter is like set around a specific event it's just I really enjoy how it is set up and how we go through it it also includes a lot of those fun trivia effects on the autograph she put down on her wedding papers to how she did her hair to costumes to things she might have said uh, like she's very interesting as well the only remark i would have is that steven's Reich is, is extremely opinionated and i feel like biographies or historical fiction sorry historical non-fiction i mean it's never really objective it always has some subjectivity to it but <laughs> This is very subjective. You really, really get to know Zweig's um, opinion on Marie Antoinette, which is very bad. And definitely at the beginning, I thought he might be a little bit too harsh. Definitely also on women in general. But I think the further I get into it, I obviously also realized that Marie Antoinette and also Louis XVI definitely didn't fulfill their job as they had. And I don't think they caused the revolution, but they definitely, <laughs> definitely were a big part of it. But I do want to say that the further I get into it, I also feel like Swag is definitely getting more and more, more kind to her. For example, it also had a chapter on how Marie Antoinette might have had an affair on Louis XVI, which she was also aware of. And he ends it up with this beautiful and kind of surprising paragraph. How pitiful seemed the sophisticated hypothesis about the sweetly virtuous queen as contrasted with the intelligible forthrightness of her behavior. And what a poor figure do those cut who make such a to-do about defending the royal honor of this woman. How lacking they are in courage and spiritual dignity. For never is a woman more honorable and nobler when she gives free way to the unerring sentiments and instincts which have been animating her for years. Never is a queen more queenly than when she shows herself a true woman. Which I think is just very beautiful. So yeah, that was my June reading month in preparation on my visit to Chateau de Versailles. I read these four books and I absolutely love them. I'm probably over prepared right now. I'm very excited to go and I'm very excited uh, to see all the beauty and to see where all these stories actually took place. Uh, I'm thinking actually I might pick up my Napoleon books in July or in one of the upcoming months so because I'm so integrated <laughs> in this situation in France right now that I think it's only natural to continue with it uh, but yeah I really really enjoyed it and uh, I might make a separate vlog or separate little video on my time in Paris and Chateau de Versailles uh, but you'll see that come around thank you for joining me and I'll see you soon <laughs>